All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin by giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakudash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. And Shalom to you, brothers, that are pushing this word out in truth and sincerity and with charity. I'm the brother Abraham from the camp here in GMS Chicago. Just coming to do another quick lesson through the Holy Spirit, Lord, and it be edifying. And uh, this video is pretty much uh, going to be, I'm going to be lamb, do a lamb back off of uh, the Apostle Gabar's video here that um, he did a live stream on a few moments ago called the Heavenly Father. It's terrible. Okay, because uh, in the so-called churches that our people go to, like sheep led to the slaughter, I aren't told these things about the Heavenly Father, that he's a man of war. Okay, as it says in Exodus, the 15th chapter, I believe all right, that the Most High is a man of war, okay, and that he is a terrible, terrible God, okay. Let's get that in the book of Psalms, Psalms 47 and verse 2, for the Lord, Yahweh, Most High, is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. Okay, it says he shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. All right, the Most High is going to do that. All right, because he has the power. All right, he's the king over all the earth, the creator of heaven and earth. Okay, so he, as it says in the book of Sirach, let's get that. Sirach 19. I believe it was 18. Yep. I'm going to start at 18. It's Sirach 19 and 18. It says, The fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted with Him, and wisdom obtaineth His love. So the fear of the Lord. Why do we fear the Lord? All right. <clears throat> it goes on to say, It says, The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do the things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom, and in wisdom is the performance of the law and the knowledge of his omnipotency. Okay, omnipotent. He can do all things. Okay, so that is why we fear Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, at the snap of a finger. He could end you just like that. All right. Any way he wants. All right. And the Apostle Gabar brought this out. In his lesson as well. This is Psalm 68 and 20. It says, He that is our God is the God of salvation. And unto God the Lord belongeth the issues from death. Right? So he controls when, how you die, man. Okay? That is why we fear Yahweh Bashim Shai. Okay? That is why we strive to be perfect. That is why we strive to follow the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of our ability. Okay? Because the Most High said he's angry with the wicked every day. All right, we don't want to be like the wicked. We don't want to be like the wicked out here doing their own thing. Like if nothing's going to happen to them if they continue living the way they are. Okay, because it says, uh, do a sinner do a, um, commit sin a hundred times. All right, let's, let's get that in the book of Ecclesiastes. Let me see if I can find it. I believe it was 11. Um, what 
it wasn't 11, but here's a good one as well. Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 9, it says, Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. So yeah, all right. You know, YOLO, right? Go ahead, live your life. Go ahead, do and follow your heart. As a lot of people say, just follow your heart. Right? Yeah, go ahead and do that. All right? But just know, just know this, that the Most High is going to bring all these things into judgment. Okay? He said, all shall appear before the judgment seat, man. Everybody, every last one of us. All right. So yeah, he's a merciful power. Yep, he's a compassionate power. But as his mercy is, so is his wrath. That's why it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But fools despise knowledge and instruction. Okay, these fools are gonna perish, man, with nuclear fire. Because they didn't take heed. Alright, they did not take heed. Okay, now uh let's see if I could uh find the scripture. Mm -hmm. Um It's not here. Let me try one more time here. Just bear with me a second. Right here, it is Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. It says, Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Right? So people just could go ahead and commit iniquity and sin. Or right, everything contrary to the Bible, committing adultery, left and right, like it's a competition, like it's a sport, over here smoking weed, like it's a sport as well. Who can smoke the most blunts? Right? All right, now observing the Sabbath day, eating abominable foods that are contrary to the uh, the law. Right? They they keep committing all these things. Daily, on a daily. Alright, but because they're not being punished for it right away after they do that. Right, that's why it's fully set in them to do evil, as it says here. Okay, though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. Okay, so the elect, the one third, they're going to fear the Most High because they took heed to these scriptures. All right, and they trembled at his word. Okay, it says, uh, but it shall not be well with the wicked. Neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. Right? So... All these people that didn't fear, that followed their own heart, right? It says, uh, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ways thereof are the ways of death. That's all these people out here in the world, man, doing their own thing, YOLO, living their life. Right? But the elect, the one third, they took heed to this word. They took action. All right, the the fear of the Lord moved them. Okay, the fear of the Lord is important. It says the fear of the Lord driveth away sins. Okay, let's get uh, another one in Sirach where it says, "Uh, there's nothing greater than the fear of the Lord." 
This is uh, Sirach 10 in verse 24. It says, Great men and judges and potentates shall be honored, which all these men are uh, men of position of power, right? Yet is there none of them greater than he that feareth the Lord, right? Now let's get another one. This is Sirach 40 and uh, 26. It says, Riches and strength lift up the heart, but the fear of the Lord is above them both. There is no want in the fear of the Lord, and it needeth not to seek help. Okay, so when you fear the Lord, man, it's like a recipe for success. All right, because it gives you prudence, right? It gives you prudence, it gives you wisdom, all right? Um, because when you know these statutes, of laws, and commandments, you know what is acceptable in the sight of the Most High, you know what pleases Him, what displeases Him, what He likes, what He doesn't like, all right? So whenever you're in a situation, all right, in your day-to-day, -day, and... You're in a situation where, um, I can't really think of a situation, but say you're in a situation where it doesn't look prudent to go ahead and do whatever it is, all right? So then that fear of the Lord kicks in, and then you don't do it, right? Then that pleases the most high, man, all right? Because you took heed to the fear of the Lord. You're like, nah, I'm not going to do this. Then the Most High is going to jack me up. Right? That's prudence. That's moving in the fear of the Lord. Alright? That's walking in wisdom. Then the Most High is pleased when when uh, that happens, man. Alright? Now, uh, there's more scriptures on the most high being the terrible power there's a lot of them man here this is a psalm 65 and 5 um it says by terrible things in righteousness wilt thou answer us so is the most high unrighteous because he answers us by terrible things? No. It says, O God of our salvation, who art the confidence of all the ends of the earth, and of them that are afar off upon the sea, which by his strength setteth fast the mountains, girded, being girded with power, which stilleth the noise of the seas, the noise of, the, of their waves, and the tumult of the people. They also that dwell in the utmost parts are afraid of at thy tokens thou makest the outgoings of the morning and evening to rejoice okay so yeah i remember um there's a scripture where it's like um the mountains and everything will fear at the presence of the most high or something like that i know i'm butchering it a little bit so salaki but um I know there was a scripture, something like that, and that one, you know, most high is real, man. This is Psalm 66 and 3. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. And yeah, man, how terrible is he is in his works, man. Let's get one, an example. This was in Solomon 12. And, uh, I'm going to start at verse 7 to kind of set the tone of it. So, this is, uh, was in Solomon 12 and 7. That the land 
which thou esteemest above all other, might receive a worthy colony of God's children, which is the land of Canaan. Right? But there was heathen there, dwelling there, doing evil, odious works of witchcrafts and abominable works, man. Right? It says, Nevertheless, even those thou sparest as men, and did send wasps, forerunners of thine host, to destroy them little by little and little. Not that thou wast unable to bring the ungodly under the hand of the righteous in battle, or to destroy them at once with cruel beasts, or with one rough word. Right? So with one rough word, the Most High could have, could have destroyed all these heathen. But he didn't choose to do that. He did it the way he wanted to do it because that's just how he wanted to do it. He's omnipotent. Okay, he can do all things. He can do whatever he wants. All right, who, who's who's to say that he's unrighteous for that? Right. So I'm gonna jump down to verse twelve here. It says, "For who shall say what hast thou done, or who shall withstand thy judgment, or who shall accuse thee for the nations that perish, whom thou made?" Or who shall come to stand against thee to be revenged for the unrighteous men? For neither is there any God but thou that cares for all, to whom thou mightest show that thy judgment is not unright. So the Most High's judgment and his works is not unright. Alright, it says, By terrible things wilt thou answer us in judgment, in righteous judgment, okay? So all the Most High's works, they might be terrible, they might look bad to you. Wait, his ways are not our ways, and his thoughts are not our thoughts, man. All right, and his ways are not unequal. His ways are not unjust. His ways are not unright. I mean, um, yeah. Right. Um, let's see. I'm gonna continue reading because it's pretty good. It says. Neither shall king or tyrant be able to set his face against thee for any whom thou hast punished. For as for so as much then as thou art righteous thyself, thou orderest all things righteously, thinking it not agreeable with thy power to condemn him that hath not deserved to be punished. So the Most High is righteous. And nobody can tell the Most High shit, man. All right? Not for any of the things that he's done. Alright. Because I remember this just popped up in my head. There was a video that a brother did. I forgot who. A while ago. Uh, about this clip on TikTok. This um, Southern Kingdom woman asked a question. She, she had asked. Uh, if you believe in God. Why would he let uh, the black people go through all that slavery. Because we went off. Because we sinned. Because the Most High is righteous for that. Because we deserve it. All right, we should have been as Sodom. We should have been as, as Gomorrah, man. That's what it says in Isaiah. We should have perished, man. But the Most High left the remnant. The righteous. Okay, that he's come to come back and save. This is Isaiah thirteen and eleven. It says, And I will punish the world for their evil. And the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. And will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. So this is what he's, the Most High is going to come back. And do and this is what's going to happen man. Are all these people. All the wicked. The proud. The arrogant. The haughty. He's going to humble all of these motherfuckers man. Humble everybody. Um... Uh -huh. 
let me see. Let me get another one here that just came to mind. Um, the Earth shall visit. This is Sirach 16 and 18. Um, it says, Behold the heaven and the heaven of heavens, the deep and the earth, and all that therein is shall be moved when he shall visit. The mountains also and the foundations of the earth be shaken with trembling when the Lord looketh upon them. This is the scripture I was talking about earlier. Wow, call all y'all bashing me out shy. I didn't even know that. Okay. So yeah, this is the one I was talking about where it says the mounds and everything is shall be like just with fear. Alright, I'm gonna reread it. It says the mounds and also and foundations of the earth be shaken with trembling when the Lord looketh upon them. No heart can think upon these things worthily, and who is able to conceive his ways? Man, that's just, like, we can't even fathom. We can't even comprehend a fraction of the way he thinks. And, man, we are but flesh. We are but worms in the sight of the Most High, man. And you don't fear the most high, man. You, y'all, he's going to make y'all fear him when he comes back, man. Let's see, let's get, um... Hebrews fall to the hands. This is Hebrews 10 and 31. I'm sorry, 30. It says, For we know him that's, that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Right, so vengeance is in the heart of the Most High, Yahweh Shai. Okay, this is what he is on his mind. Vengeance. Right, Revelations one and seven. He's, he's gonna come back to pierce to uh, with vengeance to those that pierced him, man, and everybody shall wail because of him. Right, this is verse 31, it says, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. All right, and that's what we don't want. We I brought it out uh, in Psalms that to the Lord belong at the issues of death. All right, there's a show called A Thousand Ways to Die. And <laughs> I've seen a few episodes of those when uh, I was littler. All right, when it's come out on TV, man, the the way people would die would be the most bugged out, random way to die, man. This, this is all the most. This to the Lord belongs the issues of death. Any way He wants to take you out, He's gonna do it. Okay. Anyway, man, it's going to take you out. All right, let's get uh the one in Matthew's right here. Matthew's 10 and verse 28, it says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Okay. Now let's see what that word hell means for you Christians. It's the word gina. Right? 
So it says, Hell is the place of the future punishment called Gehenna, or Gehenna of Fire. This was originally, originally the Valley of Hinnom, south of Jerusalem, where the filth and dead animals of the city were cast out and burned. A fit symbol for the wicked and their future destruction. So Gehenna was an actual place. It was basically what the garbage dump of, of Jerusalem. Right, it was basically a garbage dump where they would throw filth and dead animals, and when they were what they would burn it. It says it's a fit symbol of the wicked. This is a fit symbol of the wicked and their future destruction. This is their future destruction, man. It says, Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. Right? So, sparrow, a bird, it's not going to fall and die without the most high sanction, is it? Okay? It says, But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye, fear ye not, therefore, ye are more value than many sparrows. Right? But the most high cares about his righteous elect. Okay? This destruction that's coming is not meant for us, man. It's meant for the wicked. Right? Just like I read in that uh, definition of hell, Gehenna. A fit symbol for the punishment of the wicked, man. And be burnt up and thrown to garbage dump, man. Alright, but those that took heed, those that feared the Lord. Alright, they're going to be okay. All right. Damn, I'm already at 27 minutes. It didn't even feel that long. But come, man, I'm gonna end it there. I already went a little past where I wanted to, but it's all good. I'm gonna go ahead and close out by giving all honor, and glory, and praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Kakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of most uh, of Great Millstone. Until next time, Shalom.